know a lot of people thought I was crazy because I made some proclamations when I first did this story. And I actually said that there were some things that were involved that I thought were of an illicit nature with regard to this man's interactions with this young girl. And guess what? Just Jay was absolutely damn right. So we're going to go ahead and start off like that. But before we get into the details, and it's going to be a little bit graphic, let me give you a disclaimer first. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Now, I'm getting my article from Fox35Orlando.com, so thank you for the article. There were a bunch of them, but I thought this one was the most comprehensive. And let me give a shout out to all the YouTubers that talked about this story, shared this story. It's very, very important. When I read it, I was like, it wasn't one extra charge, it wasn't two, it wasn't three, it wasn't four, it wasn't five. Sixty. Can y'all count that out in the chat? Can you type a sixty in the chat, please? Six, zero, or S-I-X-T-Y, if you would, please, to let me know that you heard me say 60 new filed criminal charges against the pedophile that you guys just saw come across my screen. Now, there's a difference between a pedophile and a hebophile. Hebophile is over the age of pubescence, 13 years or older. Pedophile is under the age of pubescence. So everybody understands. So this would make him a pedophile because not only did we have evidence to suggest that he probably messed with this young girl, Madeline Soto, under the age of 13 years old. Thank y'all for those 60s in there. I appreciate that. Under the age of 13 years old. So we're thinking roughly about two years, maybe more, maybe less. We really don't know for a definitive uh, figure on that. 60 new criminal charges against this bitch. I mean, against this pedophile that you guys see on my screen. That is... Stephen or Stephen, whatever his stupid name is, Stephen Stearns, the prime suspect in the disappearance and death of Madeline Soto. And we're going to get on to the mother. I don't want y'all to think that we're not because I did. And I was one of the few people who actually got on to the mother. Believe it or not, there were actually people coming out and saying that, well, maybe the mother was scared. Maybe he's manipulating the mother. Look, look, don't don't do that shit. OK, don't do that. If you are an apologist for people who cause their children or turn a blind eye to be in these situations just because they want to have a mate, because they're lonely at night, because they want some creature crawling up, up and through and between their legs at night. If you're one of those people, this is not the show for you. This ain't the channel for you. We're the advocates for children because we're going to put children at the forefront. And there is absolutely no freaking way that this mother should have custody of this child. We're going to talk about that GoFundMe here in a minute, too. Let alone this man being around this kid. Let's talk about this. 60 new charges. Stearns, who is the boyfriend of Madeline Soto's mother, Jennifer Soto. And if you didn't see that interview, I could show it again. If y'all want to see it, let me know. I'll show it to you. So we have right now eight counts of sexual battery of a child under 12. That's the charge. So don't tell me that I'm wrong about what I'm talking about. Five counts of sexual battery with a child aged 12 to 18. Seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation. And 40 counts of unlawful professional, or excuse me, I said professional. 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child, 10 or more images. The 36-page affidavit, and I wish I could get my hands on that because I would love to read that just to know what the hell this child went through. Obtained by the news details all 60 counts of what Stearns is accused of, but the news is choosing not to release the details. And I understand because it's very, very graphic. But I think it would have been at least good to 
be able to pick and choose some of the things that we discuss, but we can do that another time because it's just the beginning. The document doesn't name the victim, but does include a date range of how long Stearns has allegedly been in possession of graphic materials or when the alleged abuse has started, which was around June 19th of 2019. The range tops out on February 26th of 24 or 2024, the day Madeline was last seen. A previous affidavit from the Kissimmee Police Department says that Stearns performed a factory reset. If you were in customer service, you know we refer to that we, we, because I used to be in customer service, refer to that as an RTN, right? Factory reset on your phone. That sounds like somebody who's got a hell of a lot to hide. But even then, forensics can recover the information on that phone, regardless of, oh, well, it's deleted. It's gone forever. It can be recovered. And I hope they do before this is all said and done. While it remains unclear who the victims are or victims are, if one of them is Madeline Soto, she would have been eight years old when the alleged crimes began. Make sure y'all notate in your brains. We'll come back to that. The affidavit said Stearns was in a position of familial, familial or custodial authority when he allegedly committed some of the sexual batteries. It also remains unclear exactly how many images Stearns was allegedly in possession of, but each count says he was in possession of 10 or more images. That means he could have been in possession of at least 400 images of any form of child pornography. And speaking of which, I was actually on a channel earlier today and shout out to Justin. I was over there at his uh, YouTube channel earlier watching that uh, this morning with this uh, update that he was doing. And we were talking about that and they were saying, what would he have these images for? Well, it could be for a lot of different reasons. One, I just flat out believe that he was probably using these images for his own sexual perverted gratification. Let alone the fact that maybe there might be a market for him to put this on the black market and try to sell this illegal, highly illegal content because there's a big market for uh, trying to think about how to say this for illicit deeds. Shout out to illicit deeds, by the way, for illicit deeds with children. There is a weird ass market for that type of stuff. But I honestly don't think that this man is bright enough to know how to maneuver in that realm. So he'll be arranged on April 2nd, which is just a matter of weeks away. According to the state attorney's office, sexual battery on a child under 12 is a capital felony. Okay? Capital felony and is punishable by life in prison or death if convicted. So I hope y'all catch that. His other charges carry sentences up to life in prison or 15 years in prison for each count. And I hope they give it to him consecutively rather than concurrent. So anyway, let's skip some of this. He remains in custody of the Osceola County Jail after he was arrested February 28th on unrelated charges. After he voluntarily turned his phone over to law enforcement during the search for his girlfriend's daughter, including sexual battery and possession of child sex abuse material. The night of his arrest, the Orange County Sheriff's Office named him as the prime suspect in Madeline Soto's disappearance. The state attorney's office has been working closely with KPD and received evidence that gave us cause to file formal charges against him. We appreciate the thoroughness and detailed attention of their investigation and will continue to work with our law enforcement partners to build a strong case against the defendant. The charges just came over two weeks after Madeline Soto's body was found on the afternoon of March the 1st, so a lot of y'all remember that because that was a big, big day. She was found in this area of Old Hickory Tree Road in a rural Osceola County. She was found in this area where Stearns was last seen possibly changing a flat tire on Monday afternoon, wearing clothing similar to what he was last seen in. At 819, we have evidence that shows Stephen or Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in the vehicle, Sheriff Mita said during a press conference. We believe she was already dead at that time. Madeline Soto was last seen on the morning of February 26. Stearns is said to have dropped her off at school that day, but Orange County Sheriff John Mina said that she never made it. 
Here's the funny part about that detailing. And if you guys are watching, do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up and share this. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to catch up on. The mother also came out and did an interview. And both of them, between him and her, gave conflicting information as far as he took her, she took her, we took her, we don't know what happened. And that's why I think not only the mother should be arrested for that alone, but I want y'all to think about this. And I think I could skip some of the rest of this. Yeah, I could skip the rest of this. I want y'all to think about how many years this potentially had been going on. A minimum of two years. Potentially sexual assault against a baby, against a child. She's a baby to me, a little baby. She's a child. Can't speak for herself and definitely cannot defend herself against the tyranny of her parents. I think that this mother was so in love with her boyfriend. And this is when we call it, what, what do we call that? The thug zoo, we call this hashtag mom's boyfriend, right? When you date thugs, you date death. I think this mother... And I want y'all to look at some of these videos. I'll replay the interview if you want to see it. But this mother appeared to be more in love with her boyfriend, be more concerned. She showed more compassion for him while he was talking about her missing daughter. Rather than when she finally had to talk about her daughter and just didn't really seem to give a crap. But I want you guys to take a look at these news videos. This is updated information. Let's share this and let's get into it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And I'm curious to know how many of you guys believe that the mother should be arrested and charged, investigated. She should be harassed by the investigative team. Based on what she's acting like she didn't know. I just refuse to believe that in all these years, you didn't know what was going on. You didn't see nothing. You didn't say nothing. You didn't have any idea all of this was going on. How do you not notice this is going on with your daughter? And ladies, I've been telling y'all this for a long time. Ladies in the chat can tell you if I'm right or wrong about this. Have I not been saying this for the longest? That if a man in a situation like this, usually the, prefer the perverted mind. When you bring these boyfriends into your life and you have these little young girls, these little young girls look like younger, budding, untainted versions of yourselves. Don't fool yourself into thinking that this man might not be sexually attracted to your daughter if he's attracted to you. I personally don't think that single mothers should be dating and bringing men around their children, girls or boys. I think you should. I, I, I don't understand why there's such a big push to have boyfriends around your kids when it just don't seem like a lot of these chicks are that adamant about having the biological father. They're not that frugal about bringing the biological father around the kids, but they'll bring some dude that they that they just love to be with around their kids. No problem with that, huh? Breaking this afternoon, new charges have been filed against Stefan Stearns. He is the lead suspect in the death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto, whose body was found earlier this month. Meredith McDonough is here to explain that these new charges are not connected to Madeline's murder. Sheldon, not murder, but still a total of 60 new charges have been filed against Stearns in connection with the death of Madeline Soto, who was found dead after being reported missing. Now, the new charges include eight counts of sexual battery on a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18 years old, and then seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation and 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. Now, shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, appearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on Stefan Stern's phone. He was then arrested on sexual battery charges along with possession of child sexual abuse material. According to officials, further investigation then revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. And this is from where the new charges stem. According to those documents obtained by West 2 News, Stearns was abusing Madeline for nearly two years. Now, Madeline was missing for nearly a week before her body was found in a wooded area in St. Cloud. Now, again, 
again, Stearns is a suspect in her death, but not currently charged with her murder. We'll continue to follow this breaking update. Sheldon, back to you. And disturbing new details revealed this morning from police as an outpouring of support continues for Madeline Soto. That's right. The community is honoring her memory days after investigators found her body. Fox 45's Marley Capper joining us live this morning with more. And Marley, good morning to you. We do know the community and loved ones held a memorial for Maddie yesterday. Amy and Danielle, good morning. That's right. So a lot of people showed up for this. Parents, grandparents mostly. Just people who either knew her or didn't even know her, but were just shocked to learn what she had to endure and the tragic ending of her life. People brought balloons and toys, flowers, everything you name it, teddy bears, to a growing memorial on the side of Hickory Tree Road in Osceola County. Maddie's disappearance and now murder has sparked a widespread community support in the quest for justice. Whoever it may be. They need to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. New documents reveal more about what the 13 year old victim might have had to endure. A Kissimmee police arrest affidavit for the prime suspect in Maddie's disappearance, Stephen Stearns. That's Maddie's mother's boyfriend, stating photos and videos recovered from his phone show private body parts of a young victim. The metadata timestamping those images all the way back to August of 2022. Although the victim's identity has been redacted, the birth date isn't, and it matches Soto's birthday, revealing that the victim in this report was just 11 years old when the sexually explicit photos and videos were taken. Now, Stern remains behind bars with no bond. Now, he has been arrested for those pictures and videos, but he has not been charged yet in the disappearance of Maddie or for her murder. Reporting live in Kissimmee, Marley Capper, Fox 35 News. Marley, thank you. New information this morning on the investigation into a crime scene photo that was accidentally posted to the Osceola County Sheriff's Instagram account. We are not airing that image, but it does appear to show Maddie Soto's body on the ground where she was found in St. Cloud. The Osceola County Sheriff's Office sent a new statement to Fox 35. It says, quote, the Sheriff's Office contacted the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to offer our cooperation and transparency into the inadvertent release of an investigative photograph. We understand the community's concern Concerns, and we welcome an independent review of what transpired. We did reach out to FDLE for comment. We have not yet heard back. Tonight, we're learning disturbing new details in the case of a teenager found dead in St. Cloud days after being reported missing. Documents obtained by West 2 today allege that Stefan Stearns, the boyfriend of Madeline Soto's mom, was sexually abusing that teen for nearly two years. Haley Crumblehome breaks down what else these documents reveal. Haley. So according to those documents, law enforcement was able to find some disturbing videos and images on Stern's phone, despite the fact that he said he accidentally did a factory reset on that phone the day that Madeline disappeared. But like I said, law enforcement were still. And just again, as a reminder, y'all heard that he said accident. It is absolutely impossible to accidentally do a factory reset on any smartphone, any cellular phone. It's flat out impossible to accidentally do that. Want to throw that out there for those who might not know. All able to get some significant off information off of that phone. They say the pictures and videos they found on it show he had been sexually abusing Madeline since at least August of 2022 when she was just 11. They say the room that could be seen in some of the pictures is a room in the home Madeline shared with her mother and with Stearns. Now, right now, Stearns is being held here in the Osceola County Jail on no bond on charges of sexual battery and possession of child sexual abuse material. Live in Osceola County, Haley Crumble Home, West 2 News. Just one day after the body of 13-year-old Maddie Soto was found, the prime suspect in her disappearance was a no-show in court today. Thanks for joining us at 5. I'm Manny Martinez. Stefan Stearns waived his first appearance before a judge this morning. For the second time in just a span of a few days, he's now facing sexual battery and child pornography charges, but has not so far yet been charged in Maddie's death. Fox 35's Matt Trezza explains why more charges could be on the way. Stephen Stearns was a no-show for his first appearance in Osceola County Court. His lawyer didn't even want the judge reading out the charges. Stephen Stearns? Or Stephen? 
Your Honor, at this time, I am going to waive Mr. Stern's appearance. I'm also going to waive the reading of these charges. Mr. Stern is aware of what he's been arrested for. At the first appearance, Stearns faced charges including sexual battery and possession of material depicting sexual performance by a child. Stearns had voluntarily handed his phone to investigators who managed to recover photos and videos that they called disturbing. Investigators say he's also the prime suspect in Maddie Soto's disappearance. Search teams finally recovered Maddie's body Friday evening after an exhaustive search through the woods in Osceola County. The judge said Stearns would stay behind bars. Understood, sir. You got zero bond and 24 CF 632. Good luck to you. Orange County deputies have turned over the case to Kissimmee Police. Sheriff John Mina says they have proof Stearns tried to cover his tracks after Maddie's death. We have video evidence that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 735 on Monday, February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school-issued laptop from that dumpster. At 819, we have evidence that shows... Real quick, if you have that document, you say you have the link for it, Amari, do me a favor and email it to me, theafcmatters at gmail.com. Theafcmatters at gmail.com. One of my moderators, if y'all could post that in there, that'd be awesome. And uh, just tag Amari's name. The AFC Matters at gmail.com. Shows Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. Former Orlando Police Chief Orlando Rolone says Stearns may have thought he could fool investigators. This is a perfect example of someone who probably thought uh, I can get away with this. And unfortunately, everything is pointing at the fact that he had now been caught for the murder of this child. Kissimmee police say at this time they aren't releasing any further updates on the case. In Kissimmee, Matt Treza, Fox 35 News. Case we are following closely, and tonight the investigation into the death of a 13-year-old Central Florida girl continues. Madeline Soto's body was found just over a week ago after a days-long multi-county search effort. And while no one has been charged in her death yet, the prime suspect in the case, according to investigators, is a man who was supposed to be there to protect her, her mother's boyfriend. So I have to ask this real quick. If you guys want to hear some of the details, I will look it over and see if there's certain details that I can read about it once I uh, get that uh, link to that document. And we'll just kind of go from there. But let me know what you guys think about that. I don't know if y'all that's something y'all want to even hear or not. So just let me know. Friend, Stefan Stearns. It is a story that has impacted people across Central Florida and the country. And tonight, our Rafael Pierce breaks down where the investigation is at right now and how things unfolded. About two weeks ago, Madeline Soda was supposed to be getting dropped off right here at Hunters Creek Middle School. We're told she never made it. Instead, the story took a disturbing turn, and now investigators are still trying to figure out how she was killed. From a missing teen case to a murder investigation, the story of Madeline Soto has impacted people across the country and left many in Central Florida mourning the tragic loss. It all started Monday, February 26, when Madeline's mother, Jennifer Soto, reported to police that her daughter had gone missing. In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. The next day, Jennifer told our crew her boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, dropped her daughter off at a church near Hunters Creek Middle School where Maddie attended. He told investigators she wanted to walk the rest of the way, but never made it. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. It's the last time we saw her. From there, a large search effort got underway. We have well over uh, 100 deputies, detectives, uh, intelligence analysts, and specialized personnel who are investigating this case and searching for Madeline uh, right now. Several other agencies joined in, and then on Wednesday, a bombshell arrest. Late at night, the Orange County Sheriff announced the arrest of the mother's boyfriend for sexual battery and possession of child sexual abuse material and named him the prime suspect in the case. Then the sheriff said he believes Stearns never dropped off Madeline in the first place and told us he was captured on camera throwing her backpack and school laptop into a dumpster Monday morning. Deputies say Maddie's body was seen in Stearns' car before he drove away. We believe she was already dead 
at the time and that Stefan Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. Two days later, a major but tragic discovery. Maddie's body was found in a rural area in St. Cloud, several miles away from the family's home in Kissimmee. And I thought about that also, the reason why he didn't want those charges read in the courtroom, because everybody would have known, but because I, th <laughs> I think people in jail would have did something quite terrible to him. So, I mean, I just really wish that I know that these, def uh, these attorneys, public defenders or whatever it is that you call them are trying to do what's in their client's best interest, but I really wish they would go that hard for children. Don't y'all think? I'm sorry, but I just don't have a lot of sympathy, empathy, just anything for people who hurt me. Ain't got much internet, but we got some. Can y'all hear me? Hello. Empathy, empathy, just anything. For people who hurt, got much internet, but we got some. Can Hello. 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 AFC, can y'all hear me? Look, I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of weird. No, we're not back yet. We're not back yet. We're not back yet. I open up I open up that damn link and all of a sudden my internet go down. That is very, very odd. That's a very odd thing to have happen. All right, how about that? Can y'all hear me now? That is really, really crazy. I'm not going to even lie. All right, how about that? Can y'all hear me now? That is really, really crazy. I'm not going to even lie. I get that link and my internet goes down. Look, I'm not trying to blame you, Amari, but I'm not going to lie. That was a little bit strange. A little bit strange, so I'm not gonna open that link on my on my main computer. I'm gonna do it from my uh, from <laughs> maybe I shouldn't even say where I'm gonna do it from. It's not you. It's not you. It's not you. <laughs> it's not you. Let me not do that. It's okay, Amari. It's okay. Crafts and Halls with Leela. Thank you for joining channel membership. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I I, I kid. I kid really, really badly. My, I have really dry humor. You just got a random commercial. <laughs> well, watch the. Make sure y'all watch all the commercials all the way through. What up, bro? Reese three thousand two in the building. I just gave you a shout out, man. Thank you so much, brother. He supports. When we're offline, also, man, I truly, truly appreciate that, brother, and I hope that you are having a good time where you are at. If you're already back, then I'm glad you're having safe travels out there, my brother. Good to see you, man. So, y'all let Amari know I'm just joking. I'm just joking, sweetheart. I would never throw that on you. Just joking. Let's see what we're looking like now. Time where you are at. All right. Looks like we're back in the building. All right. Now, here's what I was trying to ask before my internet started acting like crazy, crazy. I was trying to ask y'all, Hit. a matter of fact, the reason why the uh, stream went down, because y'all didn't hit the thumbs up enough. <laughs> y'all, please hit that thumbs up. Y'all didn't donate enough, right? Maybe that's what it is. Like, the more you pay, the more the internet stays on. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't paid my internet bill yet. I ain't got enough donations yet, y'all. All right. <laughs> All righty. Let's see what we got here. This is a long document. 
This document is longer than my left shoe. So, yeah. Longer than my left shoe. So, now that we're back. Now that we're back. Y'all hit that thumbs up. How many people came back? I'm pretty sure everybody was just like, ah, boo. They, they went and left and they're not coming back. But everybody else, y'all will be able to get the details. So, let's see. Stephen Michael Stearns uh, char charges the designated assistant state attorney charges this Stephen Michael Stearns, a person 18 years of age or older, on or about the 19th day of June 2019, did in violation of Florida Statute 794.0112, commit a sexual battery upon a female identified as, and that's blanked out, a person less than 12 years of age and in furtherance thereof, Stephen Michael Stearns with his, his man region penetrated the mouth of the female identified as blank. Wow. Count two says pretty much the same thing. Count three he penetrated. He used his man region to penetrate or had union with the sexual organ of a female identified as, and that name is blanked out on count three. Okay. Count four. Um, also. With the mouth region, his man region to her mouth region. Count five, same thing. Count six, same thing. And y'all, yeah, y'all can actually write it in the chat if you want to. I think I, I'm not sure if you can type it and not get flagged. I think you can. Count seven, same thing. A person less than 12 years of age. Count eight. Sex with the mouth of this female under age. Engage in an act which constitutes sexual battery with the female identified as blank and in furtherance Therefore, uh, thereof, Stephen Michael Stearns, with his junk, penetrated the mouth of a female identified as, and they got that blinked out. On count nine, count ten, same thing, count eleven, he penetrated the female genitalia of this child, Jesus. Penetrated the mouth. Count 13. With his finger penetrated the female genitalia of this child. Do y'all want me to keep going or do y'all want me to stop? Fucking shit, man. Mm, 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 mm. That's starting to turn my goddamn stomach. If it already wasn't. Y'all want me to keep going? There's a lot, there's a lot more to read. I'm not even halfway done. Said keep going. Said wicked. Says stop. We got a few people saying yes. You're saying stop. Stop. As hard as it is to hear. Because, yeah, like I said, man, what was more difficult is what that girl had to go through. Said it only gets worse. So I'm going to encourage you guys, if you need to, to step off, I'm going to continue to read. So if y'all need to step away from the podcast, I understand. So for those who can't listen, you might need to step away. And I'm not going to put this on the recording. So this part I'm actually going to have separate from the main video if that's okay and then y'all just come back here in just a little bit 
So that's what we'll do. For, we're we're going to keep going. For those who can't listen, I understand. We're going on to count 13. Finger penetration. Count 14. Touching his man region in a lewd or lascivious manner. Lascivious manner. Count 15. Touch of the man region of him in a lewd or lascivious manner. Count 16. With his tongue, have union with the breasts of the female identified as blanked out. They got that blanked. Count 17. A person less than 12 years of age, he intentionally touched a female in a lewd or lascivious manner with his hand touched the buttocks of the female identified as blank. <clears throat> Am I in tune? We're back. Yes, Heather, we are back. Yes, we're back. Okay. Count 18. Intentionally touch a female, which is a person less than 12 years of age in a lewd or lascivious manner with his Man region touching the clothing covering the sexual organ of the female identified as blank. Yep, there's still more charges. Yep, this is definitely this is definitely that R A P E word for sure. Yep. Hello, how are you? Let's keep going. Y'all hit hit that thumbs up. People are starting to come back now. What's up, Texas? I see you in the building. What up? This is not this part is not gonna be on the replay because this is flat out ridiculous. This is disgusting. He intentionally touched a female, a person less than 12 years of age, in a lewd or lascivious manner, with his man junk to the breast of a female of the female identified as blank. Count 20. With his finger, have union with sexual organ of the female identified. Jesus. Mm. Count 21. Between the day of... Between the second day of July of 2019 and the 26th day of February 2024, did in violation of Florida Statute 827.0715 and 775.08472 and 3, knowingly possess any photograph, motion picture, exhibition, show representation, image, data, computer depiction, or other presentation to wit... Looks like they gave the, um, it looks like it has a timestamp on that picture. Just the, uh, just the detail of it. So 2019-07-02 and then gives like a timestamp. Which in whole or in part, Stephen Michael Stearns knows to include any sexual conduct by a child and in doing so possess 10 or more images of any form of child pornography and the content of at least one image containing one or more of the following a child who is younger than age five sadomasochistic abuse involving a child oh my woo. Mm, 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 mm. sadomasochistic Abuse involving a child, and I'm sorry if I didn't say that word right. That's a big-ass word. Sexual battery involving a child. Sexual bestiality involving a child. What the fuck? Or any movie involving a child regardless of length and regardless of whether the movie contains sound. I know y'all don't want me to repeat what I just said. B. 
bestiality involving a child. Can y'all please hit the thumbs up to share this video? Because I know we lost a lot of people that don't know that we're back. So please hit that thumbs up. Let's try to get the 400 thumbs up. There's still more charges. Do y'all want me to keep going? These poor kids, you had to read that. Yeah, I had to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when y'all see this man's image, let me see if I can go back over here. When y'all see his face, I want y'all to remember everything I just read plus more is him. That guy. This is what he's doing with this woman's kid. And this woman had no idea, allegedly. Oh, he's got time to do all of this. Uh, just rest, just J, the rest repeats. Okay, let me see. Count 22 is a repeat. Count 23 is a repeat. So these are like pictures. Count 24 is a picture. Count 25 also involves a picture. Count 26. Bestiality. Y'all know, do y'all know what bestiality is? If you don't, Google search it. She didn't know my ass. Man, look, Rihanna and I agree. This is crazy. Ain't no freaking way she didn't know. Count 27. Count 28. 29. 30, same thing, 31, Whew. let me just keep scrolling, mm, 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 mm. 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. I thought they said 40 counts of this, but it was 60 counts total. 42, 43, 44. So this is probably for each individual video or picture or combination. 45, 46, 47. 48, 49, count 50, Fifty-one. Let's just keep going through all of these. I'm not going to read, reread a lot of these, but let's keep going. So I'm on 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. 59, count 60, bestiality involving a child. Fuck, man. So that's all of it. That's all of it. So we had to take a pause for the cause because I actually went in and read what was in the document, and I'm going to just tell y'all for those who didn't hear it, it's just as bad as you think and probably worse involving this child, this underage child, and him violating this child in so many ways, we can't even say what he actually did on YouTube, on the internet. That's how bad it is. So for those who are watching this video right now, go and look it up. 
Because even then, I was still trying to only give y'all certain details without actually reading the entire freaking thing. So, yeah. Case we are following closely, and tonight the investigation into the death of a 13 year old Central Florida girl continues. Madeline Soto's body was found just over a week ago after a days long multi county search effort. And while no one has been charged in her death yet, the prime suspect in the case, according to investigators, is a man who was supposed to be there to protect her, her mother's boyfriend, Stephen Stearns. It is a story that has impacted people across Central Florida and the country. And tonight, our Rafael Pierce breaks down where the investigation is at right now and how things unfolded. About two weeks ago, Madeline Soda was supposed to be getting dropped off right here at Hunters Creek Middle School. We're told she never made it. Instead, the story took a disturbing turn, and now investigators are still trying to figure out how she was killed. From a missing teen case to a murder investigation, the story of Madeline Soto has impacted people across the country and left many in Central Florida mourning the tragic loss. It all started Monday, February 26, when Madeline's mother, Jennifer Soto, reported to police that her daughter had gone missing. In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. The next day, Jennifer told our crew her boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, dropped her daughter off at a church near Hunters Creek Middle School where Maddie attended. He told investigators she wanted to walk the rest of the way, but never made it. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. It's the last time we saw her. From there, a large search effort got underway. We have well over uh, 100 deputies, detectives, uh, intelligence analysts, and specialized personnel who are investigating this case and searching for Madeline uh, right now. Several other agencies joined in, and then on Wednesday, a bombshell arrest. Late at night, the Orange County Sheriff announced the arrest of the mother's boyfriend for sexual battery and possession of child sexual abuse material and named him the prime suspect in the case. Then the sheriff said he believes Stearns never dropped off Madeline in the first place and told us he was captured on camera throwing her backpack and school laptop into a dumpster Monday morning. Deputies say Maddie's body was seen in Stearns' car before he drove away. We believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. Two days later, a major but tragic discovery. Maddie's body was found in a rural area in St. Cloud, several miles away from the family's home in Kissimmee. Since then, her community has been mourning the loss. It was like a, like a, like a hole is missing because everybody at school even they're like sad. Investigators now also looking at the discrepancies in the mother's statements. After learning there were inconsistencies about the last time she says she saw Maddie. And Kissimmee police say investigators are continuing to dig through evidence against Stearns. As more evidence comes up, there may be more charges in the future. So as of right now, no one has been charged in Madeline's death. But again, the prime suspect. Okay, so I'm going to play this part again because I want y'all to hear this interview. But again, oh, hold on, went too far. I want you guys to remember that the mother changed her story and was giving conflicting information. And I think for that alone, knowing the severity of these charges, and let me also tell y'all this, let's just go back to those charges for a moment. If that man was so embarrassed and so scared of people finding out the charges if he was so scared to find out and for people to find out what the charges are against him, then you would have to think, then why did he do the acts in the first place? He wasn't scared to do the acts, and now he's scared to face the music, face the consequences, face the other prisoners, face people who probably are going to really, really look and take a harsh stance against him in prison. I don't think he should have the right to be able to not let people know what. Let's see. Name and spell them both out for me. Okay. Jennifer Soto, J E N N I F E R S O T O. Mother. Mother. Jennifer, tell me how you feel right now. I feel like I can't breathe. All I keep thinking about is. Where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? But we're 
we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. We're just so worried. When did you first realize, or when did you file a missing report? We filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like 4.45 uh, yesterday, uh, 4.45 p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning, around between 8.45 and 9 o'clock in the morning she went missing. Um, we had dropped her off close to the school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. You share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. I know you had conversations with detectives. Um, not sure what that conversation <clears throat> is, but whatever you feel comfortable sharing that we'll put the awareness out there. Yeah, she was uh, spotted walking uh, by the church, by the middle school, uh, on the cameras. They saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. They didn't see a vehicle or anything else. They just saw her walk away uh, around 9 a.m., heading towards the school, but she never made it. Um, yeah. What has the school said? Have you given in contact with the school? Yes, um, that they're doing everything they can. They've given me all their resources. The principals called me. They've looked at their cameras. Cameras, um, I don't think they've caught anything. The cameras is too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy, so they can't see specific faces. Um, but they've looked. Um, I'm just waiting to hear anything else from them. Is this normal behavior? Not at all. To just not show up or call or text or anything? Not at all, no. Um, she, from time to time, she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally, and that's actually what happened yesterday. She left her phone at home. She went to school. Um, but that happens from time to time. She's got ADHD. Uh, her memory. <laughs> She's very forgetful. Um, so, yeah, there's no way to track her right now because I have, well, the detectives now have her phone. Uh, but this isn't normal behavior, no. What was the last thing, I guess, that the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Um, we spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working. But she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I see her shaking, told her good night, right? and um, yeah, that was it. I, I, I wasn't the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah, thirteen. And thank you. Uh, we have people that actually donated for the internet upgrade. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jimmy D. Thank you, Mary. So again, I want y'all to pay attention to her body language. Look how much she's shaking. She is shaking like a crap game. This woman is shaking like she's having seizures. She is shaking harder than the Harlem Shake. She's 13 years old. Yes. 13, Madeline. 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 Um, what are you thinking right now? In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. This isn't like her to just pick up and run away um, or just not go to school. Um, you know, I don't know what to think. Friends, 
the friends' parents, you've contacted and you went through every single person? Everyone that we know that she knows. We've contacted them all, reached out to them. The parents have gone out to search and look for her as well. And we haven't come up with anything yet. I've seen a lot of posts on um, Facebook, um, Hunter's Creek, rants and raves and what have you. Did people um, say that they were going to conduct some type of like search party or anything? Uh, a lot of people have asked me to volunteer. Like if there is one, if they, if they can do one, um, there I have people passing out flyers, going to every store in that vicinity, a gas station. Y'all let me know if y'all if y'all see when she starts to look sad, when you see a tear come out of her eye, or anything like that. Y'all let me know when y'all see the concern for her daughter. Church, um, I think people people were being stopped in the street this morning in front of the school to see if they've seen anything, if they've heard anything. My family is. Dippy says she wanted to uh, donate for the internet troubles. So, Dippy, after you're out there listening, my friend, thank you. Thank you very much. Definitely appreciate that. So much love. I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for showing some love. Let me know when, when, got, when she looks concerned. Anything. They're going all out right now. Um, yeah. I know as a mother, you have, a lot is going on in your brain. Um, so much to bring her back home. What have what have the the law enforcement told you that you are able to share? I mean that they're doing the best they can. Uh, they've had detectives come out interview us. They took a piece of her clothing for the canine dog to see if they can sniff her out. I'm not sure when that's being done. Um, Do you have any inkling where she possibly could be? Like if you would say, okay, last time um, I went to work and came back, she was at Jane's house or, or, or Sabrina's house and maybe I forgot to check that house or she played at this park one week and maybe she went back there or something like that. We've looked everywhere we could have thought, and anywhere she would have been. Um, she would have known to wait for me at the school. Um, but we did check where if she could have walked. Um, my mom's office is close to the school. We checked there. We checked the walking paths that she could have taken. We've checked all of her friends. Yep, sorry. I keep forgetting to turn the microphone back on. But yes, Dippy, I got it. I definitely got it. So if you are listening, Dippy, thank you. You said towards your new inter internet, love you, my God, love you right back. Thank you, Dippy, if you're if you're out there listening. Appreciate that. So hopefully the mic is working. I know I've been having all kind of internet issues over here. Terry, with a T, if you're listening, thank you very much. So some, showing some love to the internet. We got struggle internet over here. So we got struggle internet, and this woman is over here shaking like a crap game. Over here shaking like a... Like a like a like an Atlanta strip club. <laughs> Let's keep going, man. Listen to this bull crap. House. I think we've checked everywhere I could think of, honestly. What do you think? Um. Oh gosh, I just had it tip my tongue. What was she wearing? She was last seen wearing a green hoodie, black shorts, white Crocs. A black Jan Sport backpack with gray hibiscus flowers on it. And you said this is not like her. Not at all. To run away, an argument, anything like that to provoke her. She's never done anything like this, no. And we haven't had any arguments recently to have this outcome. What school? Hunters Creek Middle School. Tom, any questions? No. Is there anything that you think our viewers would need to know about the way you're feeling, the way the family's feeling, Madeline? We are desperate for any answers, anything that you could 
do to help. I'm here for it. Just please, if if you see my daughter, just please bring her home. I just hope you're okay, Maddie. I hope you're safe. I hope you're not hurt. I just hope she's okay. When um, when did you notice that she was missing? Because this was at the beginning of the, the morning. Um, she got dropped off in the morning. We did not notice until after school pickup at 4, at 4 o'clock when I went to go pick her up and she wasn't at school. So we're going in 24 hours now? Yeah. Just about? Yeah. Nothing? Nothing. No word. No text message. No messages anywhere from her. I've looked at all her social medias. I've looked at all her games she could have played with. Any any app. No weird conversations. No. Nothing strange. Everything was conversations with just normal friends or us. Did she knows how to get home by herself? As if, like, let's just say, take a, to take a bus or an Uber or something like that. She would know how to get home alone, correct? I'm not sure. I don't know if she would know how to get home. Maybe, I mean, if someone... I'm thinking if someone got in the car with her and, and if she pointed the way, what roads, she probably could figure out how to get. But, like, does she know... Her full address? I don't think. She, I don't think she does. Which would give me the. Which I mean, it just puts in my brain that she always comes home with with someone. She was. And I thought that was a bit weird. How would she not know how to get back home at age thirteen years old? I think that's a bit odd. Comes home so with there's me. no need for her to really exactly. learn. Okay. And you said no time. I think that was everything. Oh. All right, the first question is that I can. So let's listen at this jerk off. So for those who might not have heard this before, I'm gonna let y'all hear his interview once again. And I want y'all to remember all of the things that he's facing, 60 new charges. And a lot of messed up stuff that I can't even repeat over the internet. But nonetheless, I want y'all to hear, hear him speak on this again. This is only about three to four minutes. Questions if I can get your first and last name and spell them both out for me. Stephen Stearns, S-T-E-P-H-A-N, S-T-E-R-N-S. All right, so Stephen, you seem very emotional right now. Explain to us. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. So last time we saw her. What were the conversations that y'all had in the car when you dropped her off? Not much. She was asleep for most of the way. I told her have a good day at school when she got out. I love her. She said thanks. Love you too. That was it. And so where, where do you think she could possibly be? I mean, this isn't, as I was told, this isn't normal behavior. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We don't know where she can be. We're scared. We just want her home. Are you, in a sense, blaming yourself? It's hard not to. Why? I dropped her off early. I could have waited longer. She looked okay. She was walking towards the school when I saw her. It was like any other day, so I went on with my day. It's hard not to blame myself. What has the conversation been with Jen since? <sighs> She's been very, a lot stronger than me. She's been holding it together really well. And, uh, but it just keeps coming in waves. Just the reality keeps hitting. And we don't know where she is. We don't know if she's safe. We're just scared. We just want her home. Have you, like, literally put boots on the ground, went out? Yeah, I even went out with the cops uh, where I had dropped her off. And we looked all up and down the road, all along the communities, and 
There was nothing helpful. None of the cameras were pointing the street. Nothing, which in 2024 was surprising. The church across the street had some cameras, and they mentioned seeing her waiting around in the parking lot for a while before moving on, and that was it. But it was grainy. It was grainy footage, and not much, not much else. Did it seem like she walked west, east? Uh, they said in the direction of the school. I'm not sure what that is. What was the language? Not language verbally, language body language. When you dropped her off, did she seem happy? Was happy. she like, I'm going to meet she my was friends? Happy. She got a happy weekend. She just turned 13. She had a 13th birthday party. She was happy that we were all together here. And she's just very happy. She was a happy kid. She's very sweet. She's a very sweet girl. She brings a lot of joy to us. And we just, just not knowing. So the unknown is killing you. Yeah, it's like our whole world is upside down. <laughs> Not feeling her presence here is. Sorry. It's hard. I know you're fine. Don't no need to apologize. Um, what do you want our viewers to know when they see some when they see this? She's a sweetheart. She's a very sweet, kind girl. Just please be nice to her. Bring her home if you find her. Tell her that we love her. Wherever she is, I hope she's okay. I mean, if someone were to come in contact with her and you gave me her diagnoses, would it be easy to approach her without any like agitation or anything? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's a good kid. She's a good kid. If you can sum up in one complete sentence, Waking up, getting ready to drop her off at school, dropping her off at school, to now speaking to me after talking to the police about her being missing for over 24 hours right now. And what complete sense what would that be? A living nightmare. It's a living nightmare. Day started off like any other. And you know, I just want to wake up. You just get hit with waves of the reality, you just it's set again. As soon as it got dark last night, we really, we started falling apart. Cause we knew it wasn't going to come to an end. But now we're going on 24 hours and still nothing. Just conflicting reports here and there, people say they see this or that. None of it's conclusive and none of it's helpful. We just want a baby girl back. Tom, any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. So, with me showing you guys this, I want y'all to remember, oh, we'll talk about that GoFundMe. I forgot about that. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the GoFundMe on our last uh, update video on this story. We got to talk about that, too. That is an interview from the man that we believe that sexually violated the person that you guys see on my screen. Let's talk about this GoFundMe real quick because I almost forgot about that. Now, I mentioned this in the last stream and I told you guys and it looked like I was right. And I think that GoFundMe also got this right because they paused people trying to save them from themselves. Shout out to people who want to, I guess, like get this off their conscience and make themselves feel better. You know, like, like, like oh, okay, this is so, so sad that this happened to this little girl. So let's give her money in her death in hopes of making this whole thing better and making this right, which it don't. I've always told you guys it's better to invest in the living than it is to the dead because the dead can't do a damn thing with your money. When you're talking about burial, usually in cases like this, when it involves children, the state will cover the cost when there is a criminal investigation involved, when it is a murder, from what I understand. Okay, 
Now, the specifics about that might vary from state to state, but from what I understand, I think this burial was going to be covered, and it looks like I was right, and they put up a GoFundMe to the tune of, I think, $10,000, but they collected $16,000. So I want y'all to not hear it from me, because maybe people don't want to hear it from me. But let me let y'all hear from some people on Facebook. So I'm going to show you somebody who posted exactly what my thoughts were. And this was posted as of four days ago. And I quote from Penny and shout out to Penny. Penny said, Madeline Soto was quietly laid to rest already. Let me say that again for people who continue to keep, can I donate? Can I donate? They won't donate to a platform that's actually out here saving kids' lives. But you will donate and give money away to people who are potentially criminals involved in murdering a child. You don't know yet. But I, again, it says, quietly already laid to rest. Note, the family has a $16,000 GoFundMe for the funeral, even though her funeral would have been free. Mm. Ain't that what I've been saying? And not only that, it looks like there is potentially a verdict about to be rendered by GoFundMe. So let me show you guys this on the screen. I'm going to make it bigger so you all can see this. This is what you now see on Madeline Soto's funeral and family expenses. And again, it's saying funeral, which that funeral might already be covered. Pretty sure all the money was refunded. Well, it will be once this GoFundMe goes completely down. And we expect for that to be the case. And it says, donations paused. Our team has contacted the organizer with a solution and donations will resume once the issue is resolved. Okay? Now, it's paused as of right now, but we're expecting for this GoFundMe to be taken down. Because, again, who is the money going to? The money is going towards the mother and funeral expenses. First of all, the funeral might be covered. Second of all, if it goes to the to the to the mother, then the mother might also be facing criminal charges. Then where does the money go to? Now you could be potentially donating to a person who is now involved in criminal charges. I'm not against GoFundMe. I am just pro life insurance. Life insurance is going to do their due diligence to 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 uh, investigate, find out what's going on before they cut a check. And it seems like GoFundMe, until somebody gets caught, they might end up cutting the check before you actually get the full details about this story. So. Again, I want people to remember that. Be mindful before you just start just shelling your money out when people put up these GoFundMes, especially when it involves dead children. So 60 new charges. That is brand new information. If you guys want to look up the details, just forewarning yourselves, don't eat while reading it. Be sitting down. Because the details are absolutely barbaric. Just really, really bad what this man is accused of doing to this girl. All right. That's a hell of an update. Let me know what you guys think. And we'll try to we'll try to put this video together. I know we had some technical difficulty. We'll try to put the video together in a comprehensive way. And hopefully it'll make sense when you watch it back on the replay. Okay. Please leave a comment. And if you come up with any more information, our email address is the AFCMatters at gmail.com. You can send it there. Okay. Young lady, we're not going to rest until we get you justice all the way. We believe that your mom also needs to pay, okay? So we're not going to rest until we get some real justice. Stay tuned. Now that we finally made it through three hours of story number one, which is a huge update. Thank you guys who are still here. I don't know how many people we actually have watching right now. I'm pretty sure most people already was just like, like they've already called it a night, said so I don't donate to them. You can donate to GoFundMe. I'm just saying, with some of these, just wait. Just wait a moment. Just wait a minute. Like some people donate too early before they find out what's really going on. That's all I'm saying. 
Just wait a little bit. I look up and somebody got almost $20,000 of money that they might not deserve. Just wait a moment. And thank y'all for the people who were able to donate to Just Jay's Struggle Internet over here. I got that, that welfare internet over here. Got that Biden internet. So thank you guys so much. I'm going to upgrade this internet as soon as we get offline. So thank y'all. We're on story number two out of seven. Thank you, Tanea. We got 361 watching. Let's see. What's up? Uh, let me see. I'm here, Jay. Thank you, Deborah. Appreciate that. For more coverage on this uh, story, she posted the link in there. Thank you, Dippy. Let me see. Let me get these videos up over here and let's move on to story number two real quick. And if you guys would do me a favor and please click that thumbs up because when you do, it's going to bring more people to come check out. Oh, I did fix that audio over here. I'm going to play this one last because I did fix this audio. So they had courtroom audio of this story. <clears throat> and I'm sure the courtroom had to know that we couldn't hear anything and I had to try to fix it. New to the chat and channel. Thank you, Triple T Sharon. And much love. Definitely appreciate you being here. So if you're in the chat, that means you've already subscribed. And I hope to earn your subscription and that you stay here and continue to keep watching our videos. We stand for the advocates for children. We want to continue to keep bringing coverage to these stories. That's what we're hoping to do. And get some justice for our babies. All right. Let's move on to story number two. I think our internet's doing okay. Let me see here. So if you guys can hear me, we should be good. Let me test this thing one more time. Make sure that we're good. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No, I didn't want to open that again. No. What the? F oh, Jesus Christ. I did not want to open that again. This damn thing that changed my homepage and everything. That, that actually might be killing my internet. Huh. Interesting. Let me see. Hold on just a second, y'all. Let me see. Where's my home page? Right here. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. see did that fix it okay it did yeah I better not ask for anybody to send me any more links while we're live because that could have really screwed my computer up and it might have I think I need to run some security protocols <laughs> yeah how about we do that Hmm. Run us a good old virus scan real quick. How about that? Just in case. Inky Biss just donated five channel memberships. So Inky Biss, welcome. And if you are listening, thank you very much for doing that. Been a channel member for a long time, as you guys can see from her icon. So thank you very much. So the people who now have channel memberships are Robin Hitch, so Robin, you have a channel membership. Jimmy D, you have a channel membership, brother. Kate, K-A-T-E, you now have a channel membership. E-V, E-V, you have a channel membership. And Heather, Heather, you now have a channel membership. And that was donated by way of Incubus. Incubus, so if y'all guys would just thank Incubus for showing some love. So I definitely appreciate that. So it looks like I don't have any viruses on my computer yet. Knock on wood. Said, don't jinx yourself. I'm trying not to. Just saying. So let's go on to story number two. This is really taking us a long time. So if you guys are listening, do me a favor again. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. No, that was my fault. I asked for the email. So that was my fault. That was my fault. All right. Let's move on to story number two.
Seriously, just when you think it can't get any more callous and a person can be any more non-caring, you have stories like this and it just makes you ask, why are these people even producing children? Because it's their choice and they end up with a result like this. It's just flat out ridiculous. It's inexcusable and it just needs to be punished. Before we get into the details, let me give you a disclaimer. Then we can talk about the details. So here we go. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I'm getting this story from my favorite source, which is lawandcrime.com. So if they're listening, thank you very much for this article. They do a great job keeping us updated with a lot of stuff. Look at this beautiful baby. And I'm just like, look, I'm going to say to the mother, there was absolutely no reason, really, no matter what the baby looks like. But this is such a beautiful, innocent soul that could have grown up to become anything. And it did not have to end like this, especially when you have a system like the um, the safe haven that will take on the children if you don't want them. It did not have to end like this. A 24-year-old New York mother is facing murder and manslaughter charges in the death of her 11-month-old girl after she allegedly dumped her down a 10-foot pipe access area with mud and water at the bottom and left her there to essentially die. The mother's name is Persia Nelson, P-E-R-S-I-A. She pled not guilty to manslaughter to the manslaughter charge on Monday morning. And she, oh my God, I cannot say this word. Schenectady City Court. And I'm sorry, I, I can't pronounce that area. I can't do it. I just can't. Police added a murder charge Monday afternoon after an autopsy revealed her daughter by the name of Halo Branton, which I love that name. Love that name. Halo died of hypothermia, according to the Albany Times Union. Halo was the subject of an Amber Alert issued shortly after 10 a.m. on Sunday. The alert said that she had been last seen near 12th Street and Campbell Avenue in Schenectady around 9 30 p.m. Y'all, please don't get on to my case about in, uh, pronouncing that incorrectly. I know it's not right. Authorities from Schenectady Police, New York State Police, and FBI, among other agencies, searched the area. Police tragically found the girl around 1 p.m. Sunday on the campus of the General Electric, which y'all guys will see the pictures of about roughly where that is. Paramedics rushed the girl to the hospital where doctors pronounced her dead. Schenectady Police Lieutenant Ryan Mascheron told reporters, I wish they would stop typing that city name in there or change it or something. I, I can't pronounce that. A criminal complaint obtained by law and crime said that the girl died after Nelson, the mother, dropped her down a 10 foot deep pipe across a pipe access area filled with water and mud at the bottom. Imagine what this baby emotionally went through, was frightened and scared and was probably screaming. This was located on the General Electric campus about three miles from where Halo was reported missing. Police took Nelson, the mother, into custody on Sunday morning. Local CBS affiliate WRGB posted a video on YouTube of Monday's 10-minute arraignment on the manslaughter charge. A prosecutor with the with the county district attorney's office, I'm going to skip that word again, said Nelson, the mother, dumped the baby down the pipe access area and left the child there to essentially die. A judge set her bail at 500000 cash and $1 million bond record show. Prosecutor said Nelson could be a flight risk as she has no job and moved to the area in November to live with a boyfriend. Mm. Motive 
motive. How many of you guys believe this mother did not love this child? We have a thing that we call here. It's called hashtag babies for benefits. When these inhumane individuals have children, they don't love them, don't care about them, don't want to see them grow up, don't care if they live or die. They have them because they're trying to only collect benefits off of the backs of these kids, which is why the AFC created hashtag babies for benefits. Whether it be Section 8 food stamps, car vouchers, child support, or just control over a man, or maybe you just wanted some attention. Maybe everybody was talking about, oh, how beautiful the baby is, and you just love the attention that you were getting because you produced this beautiful child. But she loved her boyfriend more than the, the product that biology helped her create. Wouldn't give up custody. I want y'all to imagine. You didn't want the kid? Could you have given up custody? Yes, you could have, but she didn't. So keep that in mind. She wanted to live with her and she lived with a boyfriend. She had a second child that she does not have custody of and has limited contact with. Can we get a hashtag deadbeat mom in the chat? Haven't heard, haven't had to use that term in a while, but it applies. Hashtag deadbeat mom. She don't have custody and limited contact. A cousin of the girl's father told the Albany Times Union her family is devastated. The father has been fighting her for custody. And she refused to give up custody. She was beautiful. She was charming. She was very intelligent. Uh, she told the newspaper she looked just like her father. Mm. Macheron declined to say who reported the girl missing. New York State Police, when announcing the Amber Alert, said Halo was taken under circumstances that led police to believe that they are in an imminent danger of serious harm and or death. The agency originally said that the girl was found safe and unharmed after canceling the alert. However, it has since been edited, it edited its post and on social media to say that Halo has been located. So that was just a bit of a typo there. Nelson's next court date is scheduled for Thursday, and that is today's date of March the 11th. So whatever Thursday is, that would have been. Um, so if today is the 11th, then that would be in two days from now, depending on when you're watching this video. You are looking at a deadbeat, no good mother who deserves life in prison with no possibility of parole and no chance of return. That's what she deserves for what she did to this angel. OK, let me give you guys the fair usage and then we'll take a look at we only got a couple of news videos. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And if you guys would, do me a favor and please click that thumbs up and share this video so more people can see it, okay? Thank All right, so here we go. Do me a favor, if y'all are watching this video, please hit that thumbs up and share this. It's heartbreaking, but nothing is more heartbreaking than what this baby had to face. There was no reason for this to happen, especially when dad is fighting for custody. But you know what's funny? Mom's boyfriend didn't have to fight to see this kid. He was around this kid all the time that he didn't give a crap about, didn't want, didn't like. And mom could have just said, here, go to your dad. She didn't want to do that. She wanted to throw this baby down a hole. A whole rather than give up custody to the father who could have raised his child to grow up and become something great. Ain't that a piece of of crap? We have a sad update from outside the Schenectady Police Department. We're learning that Halo Branton has died. That information just coming out uh, just a couple hours ago at this press briefing that happened at 4.30. Um, police tell us that she was roughly 11 months old. Her first birthday would have been next month, April 14th. And police also telling us that this quickly went from a missing persons case to a criminal case. But during this press briefing, not many details were given because it did just happen a couple of hours 
hours ago. We're still trying to learn how Branton was found on the General Electric property and what was the cause of her death and if police found her still alive. Questions that could not be answered today. Uh, but here is what we do know at this time. Um, we are learning that she first went missing around 9.15 um, last night on 12th Street and Campbell Avenue. That was when the last time she was actually found seen. Police and Amber Alert was issued this morning around 10.30 a.m., but it was canceled just a few hours later around 1 p.m. Police searched near areas where Branton was reported missing, including Hillhurst Park, and found her near General Electric's property. I asked an active police lieutenant, Ryan Masheron, if Branton was still alive when they found her. He told me he could not answer that question at this time. Branton was taken to Ellis Hospital, and Lieutenant Masheron says the Amber Alert tips and the sheer amount of resources and departments from all across the capital region who showed up to f try and find Branton and did find her, it did help them. I think it was through a lot of different components, so obviously tips um, and the information that we originally received kind of centered our, our, our search around that area, um, and there were a great deal of resources being deployed throughout that area. We had a uh, New York State Police Aviation was out today. Multiple drones were in the air. Multiple canine units were helping throughout the night as well, searching the area. Lieutenant Masheron says nobody is in custody as we speak. No one has been arrested, but they are interviewing multiple people for this investigation. Let me say this real quick before I play this next video. This is yet another example why I don't have sympathy for people who usually have custody of these children who have all of these options, a ton of options. Number one option, especially since the fact that most of these women are mothers, they get first right of refusal. If they don't want to have a kid, they can simply just not get pregnant. Pregnancy is a choice. It is something that is not forced upon you. Let me say this. Let me address something in, um, about this, which I thought was really weird. And maybe you might, guys might feel some type of way about this. So I'm just curious. I had somebody in the chat and maybe they were just trolling me. But I was like, I'm going to bring this up on my next video. And you know what they said to me? They actually said that there are men out there that try to trap women by getting them pregnant and then run off with the kid. Believe it or not, there is somebody who actually, I don't know if you can find the comment out of the hundreds of thousands of comments that are in my videos, but it's there if you find it. Real comment. They actually said that men are going out and getting women pregnant and running off with the kids. And I said, first of all, how does a man have sex with a woman if the woman don't want to have sex with the man? Because you know what they call that? They call it that big R word, that S-A word, that sexual assault word that can land a man life in prison if he decides to try to have sex with you without your consent. So if you consented to sex, to ha, ha, ha. If you consider to that with your legs cocked up in the air, waiting on the semen to rain down. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> waiting for the semen to rain down. Okay. That is called a choice, first of all. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. That is a choice, okay? Second of all, if you don't want to go through with the pregnancy, look, y'all stop laughing. If y'all don't want to go through with the pregnancy, you can choose to terminate the pregnancy. I guess they're trying to make it to where you can't do that now, I guess. So maybe that's that one thing is not an option. Plan B is an option. That's an option also. Condoms are an option. Right? After that, after you go through nine months of carrying this child and then give birth to the child, you also can A, give the baby up at the hospital, which is the safest thing to do. B, you can visit any safe haven location, which almost every city has them available from fire stations to police stations to even certain um uh stores like like 
like I think Walmart's or something like that, but you can look them up safe haven. You could just Google search where the locations are. You can give the baby up, no questions asked. Baby will be safe, right? Lastly, you could actually choose to allow the father to have custody of the child, which is an option. Outside of that, if you choose to keep the kid, Section 8 food steps is things that might be a difficult process to go through. Most people out here actually working and busting their ass and got a job and earning income, whether they can afford it or not, like most of us are, right? And just footing the bill. But there are other things out there where the system, the government system, which is meant to be a tool and not a crutch, but most people use it as a crutch, not a tool. Absorb that. Get back to me on that, okay? But it's available to make sure that you have a soft landing, right? So with all of these tons of options, if you still choose to hurt, murder, starve, stab, hurt a kid, and cause the death of that child, then I believe that there should be zero sympathy. I don't want to hear a fucking thing about her mental health. I don't care she needs to go to hell to meet satan the opposite of yahweh can you dig it straight up and down that should be the end of it no more excuses men getting women pregnant like what Breaking news in the case of the baby found in Schenectady yesterday after an Amber Alert. The mother of 10 month year old Halo Branton is now charged in her death. Stella Porter is outside Schenectady Police Headquarters. Stella, the details from police are harrowing. They are, Faith. These court documents we just got say that baby Halo died when that mother dropped her down what police are calling a 10 foot deep pipe access area on GE's campus. That mother appeared before a judge this morning. She is 24 year old Persia Nelson. She is facing second degree manslaughter charges in baby Halo's death. This morning she was represented by public defender Steven Signori. That hearing lasted about 10 minutes. Court documents say the crime took place on Saturday night at 10 p.m. The Amber Alert for baby Halo went out on Sunday morning. The baby was found on GE's campus yesterday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and rushed to Ellis Hospital, where she later died. Today, we are learning that mother has no criminal history, but prosecutors said she has another child in Columbia County who she does not have custody of. The judge denied prosecutor Mike Noble's request to remand Nelson to jail. Instead, he set bail at $500,000. In just a couple minutes here at Schenectady Police Headquarters, we are expecting a news briefing with more details from police. And of course, we'll be asking questions and trying to learn more details on baby Halo's death. That is the latest here live in Schenectady. Stella Porter, News Channel 13. Now, if you guys want to hear the court proceedings, um, I can add that. So I'll let you guys listen to that. Um, I can give you maybe about five minutes of it. It's going to be a little, it's going to be really hard to hear this. This is after I tried to fix the audio and I did a lot of audio editing just for you to even hear a little bit of this. So I'll let it play, but if you need to cut it, just let me know. I'll let y'all try to hear some of this. Good morning, Ms. Nelson. My name is Judge Carl Stalatico. I'm going to preside over your arraignment. We have Mr. Signori here. He's an attorney. Are you going to represent him? Yes, Your Honor. You represent Ms. Nelson. We also have the prosecutor here. Mike Noble is on behalf of the defendants. Okay. Does everyone have a copy of the charge of manslaughter in the second degree? Judge, I, I do not have a copy of that on my desk. I have a copy of it on the screen. Do you need a, a copy of this one? Okay. Thank you. 
I'm sitting here really, really talking, but I've always been a proponent for natural hair, and I know that might look crazy to a lot of you guys, but I've always supported women having and wearing their natural hair and being proud of it. I mean, it's just a lot of natural hair. I don't think it looks out of order necessarily. It's just the way it looks. It's just a lot of hair. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I feel so conflicted because I don't like her. I don't like her actions. And then the hair seems to look out of place. So I definitely understand where people are coming from. But like I said, I, I'm i I'm pro-natural hair, though. You know, you're charged with manslaughter in the second degree. It's a class C felony. Do you wait for formal reading the charge, Mr. Signore? I never wait for formal reading. I'm going to tell you some of your rights. Please listen carefully. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to hire an attorney to represent you on this charge. If you can't afford one, you have the right to have one appointed to represent you at no cost to yourself. You have the right to a speedy and a public trial. You have the right to confront your accusers at that trial. You have a right to require the prosecution to prove each and every element of this offense beyond a reasonable doubt before you can be convicted of it. Do you understand those rights? Ms. Nobles, would you like to be heard about the potential release or any other issues? Yes, Your Honor, we are requesting that you remand this defendant uh, without bail uh, pending trial. Uh, the defendant is charged with manslaughter in the second degree um, for allegedly recklessly causing the death of Caleb Blanton, um, who would have been 11 months old this coming Thursday. Um, the allegations are that she dropped that child down uh, pipe access, hole in the ground essentially, on the GE plant. Uh, grounds that was approximately 10 feet deep left the child there essentially to die um, without seeking any help whatsoever. Um, this defendant is a significant risk of flight. Um, she has uh, little to no ties to Schenectady County. Um, she has only been residing here since this past uh, November when she lived in uh, or moved in with a boyfriend who she had recently began a relationship with. Um, prior to that, she temporarily stayed in a uh, shelter in Albany County, but she's originally from Columbia County, the Hudson area. Uh, she does have another child in that county who she does not have custody of and has li limited contact with. She has no, other than that child, she has no family in the state of New York that we're aware of. Um, her mother and siblings reside in the state of Florida. Uh, she has no job or anything tying her to this area. Um, so it, would be, it wouldn't be much for her to, to take off and, and leave what she has, um, has here and has done here behind her. Um, the gravity and weight of these charges, well, they're um, seen on violent felonies at this time. The investigation is ongoing. Um, an autopsy will be performed and there's potential for significantly enhanced and additional charges to be brought. Um, and beyond that, the allegations are that she caused the death of her own um, not even 11 month old child. I, I, you know, I'm hesitant to minimize any manslaughter charge, but um, there's simply more to this than other manslaughter charges we might see, um, giving her an increased risk of flight. Um, Based on her lack of ties to the area, the serious nature of the allegations, again, we're requesting that you remain this defendant without bail to this connected county Hopefully jail pending hear the trial. And I remind the court that she has the ability to bring a further bail application in county court and have that decision reviewed if she wishes to do so. Um, 
um, if you'd like to hear a, a numerical uh, amount of cash bail, I, I can provide that as well. Mr. Signore? Uh, Judge, I'm, I'm operating at a little bit of a deficit, um, only because we've just screened our clients, and so I only had about 10 or 15 minutes, just by virtue of logistics, not by virtue of any other uh, factors here. So it's a little difficult for me to, to make a full loan uh, bail application before your honor. You know, I do know that she is living in Oswald's Avenue, and she's uh, had prior employment at Columbia Memorial. Note, if I believe, according to my client, she has no criminal history. I don't have a history in front of me, but uh, based on what she's indicated to me, she does not. And uh, hopefully, I'm not mistaken because I, I'm going on with what my client is saying. That's what my information indicates. Okay. And she's confirmed that she has no uh, criminal history. Judge, I would be asking you that be said, but I appreciate what Mr. Nobles has said because we do have an opportunity to bring another bail application of the county court when we've done a full investigation ourselves and then we have to sit down more formally with her and get more information to put together a more formal bail application. Uh, what I would ask your honor if you would to send some form of bail, uh, it's just by virtue of the fact that you're representing her, she's determined to be indigent. I doubt very much she'll be able to afford anything, even if we were to consider that reason. Uh, I would ask for a very valuable bail being set. If your honor is to be without bail, I do understand that we have another opportunity to address it uh, on the ground for one kind of one opportunity to be able to formally put together with a formal bail application. So yeah, I apologize. I'm just trying to get out the information myself. This is just as fresh to me as it's probably people in this world. Well, have you had enough time to speak with her this morning to make an argument that you're comfortable with, or do you yes. want to No, I'm, I'm comfortable with the argument I made. It's, it's, just, it, it's just a little bit more difficult because we want to be more formal about this. And, you know, not getting more of a background or work history, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have right now is she had prior employment at Columbia Memorial. Uh, she's been out in this area for four months. And uh, absent that judge, uh, you know, we would ask that there be some uh, numerical bail. Likely that even if he were to make it, we consider we would out there and she doesn't make it. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, numerical bail. Do you want to, besides remand, request any number? Judge, I would recommend no less than $500,000 cash, $1 million bond. Well, first, I am going to make the individualized determination that she does pose a risk of flight to avoid prosecution. That's based on the charge that's pending against her, along with her activities and histories and her lack of ties to the area. I do find that cash bail. I do find that cash bail is a securing order that's most likely to result in her returning to court after considering the fact that the CDL is required to consider. I am going to accept bail in three forms. I'm going to deny the people's request for a remand at this time, though the allegations are heinous. It's a class C felony, and she is presumed innocent. I'm going to accept bail in the amount of $500,000 cash, $1 million secured bond, and $5 million partially secured bond, secured by the public of 10% of the total undertaking. That's a brand new exception to my ruling. Based on her being taken into custody, yesterday at about 6 a.m. I believe her preliminary hearing day would be Thursday at 1.30. Do the parties agree? Yes. Thursday, March 14th at 1.30 in the afternoon. That's going to be your next court date right here in this courtroom for a preliminary hearing. You have to be here on that date. If you're in custody, you're going to be brought down by the officers. If you're not in custody, you have to come here voluntarily. It's going to be your next court date either way. If you're not here, a bench warrant could be issued that would direct a police officer to arrest you and take you into custody and bring you to court, and then you could face more restrictive release conditions, and also we could conduct proceedings without you. It could be a pretrial hearing, a trial, or even a sentencing if you're convicted after trial. And if that happens, you can be waiving and forfeiting your important right to be present and aid in your own defense, which you do not want to do. Mr. Signore, does she want to know the contact sheet? You get four reminders. Judge, we could reserve on that. Again, the bail set here, I don't know. It's not going to can always reserve on that. Okay. Is there anything else, attorneys, for the record before we conclude the hearing? No, sir. Thank you so much. There's no reason. You're all set. We'll see you on Thursday. Have a nice day. So I definitely apologize about the audio, even though that's on their end, but that was even after I tried to fix it. Like, what was the point of even them posting that video with them having such just 
unintelligible audio, but nonetheless, such a beautiful little baby. And dad fighting for custody. It's just flat out inexcusable for her not to just give this baby up instead of making this baby suffer the fate it ended up facing. Cruel, unusual murder. And I think this 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 individual deserves the maximum sentence allowable under law. There can be no forgiveness for what this baby had to go through. And that's just what I'm going to stand on for us to have so many options and then do this. I don't care if it's postpartum. I don't care if it's prepartum. I don't care if it's midpartum, overly partum. I don't care what partum it is. I don't want her pardoned for this catastrophe, this this completely avoidable thing that she did to her daughter. To that little girl, beautiful little girl, let me see if I can get back to her photo. That's, both of those are one of my favorite photos. So, to this baby Halo, young princess, R.I.P. That's probably my favorite picture right there. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think. And share this video so more people can see it, okay? Thank you.